Okay, so we know we settled the planet uh, Fairwind on cycle number six, and we've already gone into cycle seven, but in between, I wanted to get the, the exchange set up. So the colony initially starts out with all these builds, agriculture concern, colonial center, uh, mining concern, a number of factories and things like this. And each one of these builds uh, requires material and resources to operate and uh, generate usually generate something although that's not necessarily true in every perspective but they all get accounted for so and then things that we mine so my mining ships had already started mining some stuff and so I un unloaded those into the exchange and set everything up this sets me up for understanding what my uh, uh, needs are going to be and how much my revenue is going to, to progress and I'm not going to go through all of this uh, because obviously that would be pretty arduous. We'll just touch on a couple and then I'll, at some point I'll bring us back around to this corner because there's a couple other things I want to set, uh, set up and establish too. In this case we start out with A which is atmospherics and uh, our factories produce 10 tons of atmospherics every cycle and out of all my bills a uh, total there is a, a negative one for uh, the uh, use or need so this leaves me with a surplus of nine so one minus ten gives me a surplus of nine and then we'll go through and look at okay for carbon uh, I produce five tons of carbon but I use twelve and a half tons so this is actually gonna give me a negative of of negative surplus of seven and a half. So when it comes to figuring out profit, my nine my nine tons of surplus will generate a modest tax revenue, and this negative seven point five is going to generate a modest negative uh, tax revenue. And ideally, when everything's added up, uh, I'll end up making a little more more than I'm losing kind of scenario. And if it plays out that way, it would be great. So when we look at other scenario, uh, other things, uh, my refinery is producing 20 tons of, of fuel. And this is defined fuel in two aspects. Uh, there's, there's chemical fuel and uh, hydrogen fuel, FU. FU is uh, the, the fuel that Fly, uh, that our starships operate off of that our star uh, our fighter uh, our star um, star fighters would operate using uh, chemical fuel would be that ground based vehicles would use so in this case uh, my consumption rate is 0.1 and my production rate is plus 20 so I'm going to start out with a, su a surplus of 19.1 it's from that surplus that I'm going to uh, refuel my ship so in the case of the Iron Hunter I needed to have like six six points of fuel so I would have taken six six plus six points of fuel fuel excuse me from my surplus and and loaded it into the ship which then would reduce this to a 16 uh, or a 13 point one and I would do that with all the ships that returned to Fairwind to be resupplied and refueled and leftover so if I have ships that are sitting at the planet and all my uses and all my needs are, are, are met, uh, I can choose to divert my surplus to my warehouse and stockpile it. Now my warehouse is limited to 100 tons uh, per item because that's the current scale of the warehouse. So, or if I could choose to sell my surplus fuel, oxygen, water, and food, two visiting starships and this generates an additional form of revenue all this stuff adds up over time right and at the end of the day what this also sets us up for is it establishes the uh, what my my colony can do and not do and I know that I start out with an, an initial balance of 500 credits my current exam, uh, government expenses, and this is only accounting for the, the bills themselves, it's not accounting for anything else that I'm going to establish, and we will get to that, is negative 49 credits. So I need to make a revenue of at least 50 credits a cycle or I'm going in the hole. Now, some of my bills are owned by the Platinums who accompanied the colony. And this means instead of the house paying for their expense of operating those particular builds, since they're not house owned or government owned, they are uh, corporate owned. The corporate 
platinums pay the house a tax. And so in this case, they generate 26.5 uh, credits per cycle in, in tax. And so I'm actually about only about 25 credits in the hole at the beginning uh, to, that I need to generate some stuff from. My also, my, my tax base, my initial tax base based off of the bills that I have in, pl in place is 0 .0005. And because my house lord starts out as a squire, that is the, the, the lowest house noble rank they can have, it, ga it gains a 0 plus 0 .001 modifier. So my tax modifier would be 00105. And I would take that times the population, which I have uh, on cycle 7, I established that I have uh, a base population growth of 80 people. So now I have 10,080 people as my population and I would take it times this modifier 0 0.00105 and I would get a whopping 10.8 credits for, for taxes. It's actually 10.58 credits if you want to go that. So if I'm already looking at a negative, uh, negative 49 positive of 26.5 and a positive revenue or tax base of, of 10 point I'm still I'm still operating in in the hole and so I'm looking at uh, 26.5 plus 10.58 divided by 49 uh, negative 1192 for this for this uh, this cycles tax revenue now that's not complete because like I said, all the all the surpluses, all the positive surpluses can generate a modifier. And uh, I have to go and look exactly how that plays up and what that cost comes a factor comes out. And I should, I'll have that in a future rendition of this when we take it off. Uh, we also also know that, okay, my factory A, which I initially start out, amongst the, in addition to the mineral resources or the manufactured goods that it produces, it also is allowed to produce one ton every cycle of Tech One material. So in this perspective, I'm going to say I want it to produce one one metric ton of ballistic rifles, BR, and I believe the production ratio is. 50 rifles per ton and until I'd have to go look it up in in the equipment equipment guide to be sure of that because I initially came with 50 ballistic rifles and that's not going to be sufficient for my ground force needs so yeah I'm looking at ballistic rifle under long arms ballistic rifle tech level one range is long soft point one it's 25. 25 units per metric ton. So I'm going to produce 25 tons of BR in this next cycle. Not, tw not tons, 25 units. And it will continue doing that until I change this. So ideally, I would have a, I'm going to have what I call my armory, which would be a, somewhere on the back sheet. So perhaps here, I'll say armory, and we'll say BR with tech one and then I'll list how many I have and over time as I allot them to things that will reduce that stockpile as I produce them I will increase that stockpile uh, I also have a research facility uh, tech one so that allows me to decide what kind of blueprints and stuff I want to research by definition a tech level uh, a, a squire uh, house has access to all tech level one or less items. In theory, I could be making, I could choose to make uh, 10,000 stone hammers instead of 25 ballistic rifles because uh, negative 10 technology or negative uh, negative 
and 10 tech, I could easily manufacture those things in my sleep. Now, that would be definitely a waste of resources and uh, effort to do, but I could do it. Uh, my research facility allows me to research blueprints so I can build better, uh, better builds, uh, better components for starship construction, better weapon systems, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So in theory, I could be researching uh, Tech 2 uh, automatic rifles, and that would take me five rounds to do, and five cycles to do. And you know, just for fun, let's let's just go ahead and do that. I mean, ideally, I might want to be doing researching uh, uh, ship components more, but uh, weapons have as have their role too. So we have five cycles worth and we're going to research AR Tech 2 rifles. So at the end and in five additional cycles my research will be complete and then I will now have the ability to manufacture Tech 2 assault rifles and in order to do that I will have to then build some sort of factory that can produce them and we will have to look into see what is required for that and the same with my shipyard now my shipyard can produce X amount of ship components on a given uh, over time and it's dependent on uh, what the ship components are I think hulls and, and and drives and things like this some of them take several cycles to do uh, right now I know I can be building uh, uh, sublight drives every cycle or something like this but I also would in order to do that I will need to find the component I want to research and or uh, build and then I will have to uh, allot the materials that I need and the resources I need to manufacture the item so until I've got some stuff stuck in my stockpile here I don't really want to be mucking with that just at the moment but my research facility also allows my uh, research and development uh, laboratory to have two field research labs. And so I can then remember some of those early, those early discoveries, for example. So I could go back here and look at, I'll find out where I wrote, up, wrote them down on first, that might help. And then we'll wrote them down the back of something. This is what happens when you write stuff down, you don't know where you keep it. Always keep your notes. Yeah, I need to research on the planet. Oh, for Pete's sake. Oh, here we go. So, all right, on early exploration role, one of my first things was a wildlife encounter. So on Fairway. And I'm going to res I'm going to spend five cycles and research wildlife encounter. Wild uh, fauna Fairwind. And then my next one was gargantuan fauna. So on five a cycle five cycles to focus on gargantuan fauna, fairwind. And then I have my build queue. So my initial colony has a build, has a construction firm that's part of the house uh, controls. And that means I can build, I can be building more stuff. And in order to do that though, I need to have my material stockpiled uh, to build those things. The first thing that usually gets built next is another housing concern. It's the one that takes the least amount of materials and so I'm going to want to do that. I'm going to want to set up a housing concern and then I'm going to make sure I have all the right required materials to do so. Once I've devoted the materials then I can uh, put it in there. So I'll, I will put uh, housing concern which can be broken down in two ways. When we look at a world like Fairwind where the atmosphere is breathable, the environment is conducive, uh, we're looking at uh, a complex of a town. And this town consists of shops and small businesses, mom and pop shops, things that don't 
get on the radar as a major build, as well as housing for 10,000 people. And in a pinch, it can be you can house up to 15,000 people. So my initial colony comes with 10,000 people. And at some point, they're going to exceed that 15,000 pretty fast. And it becomes crowded conditions at that end. We'll start having issues potentially with population satisfaction and rampant disease and things like this, which is not necessarily something we want. So we're obviously going to want to build one or more additional housing concerns to give us an expanded option for housing all of our population growth and potentially incoming settlers that will come in very, as via planetary and ship traffic events. We also want to uh, uh, look at the possibility of spreading things around. So in the, on the, my initial map, it's not very clear here, but that, that's a star. And that's where uh, my capital for Fairwind, my initial colony has been established. And I once again have yet to come up for a name for it, but I would write it down here, uh, the name of the city, etc. And I can choose to add the housing concern to this location, which will then double potentially 30,000 people can live in this one location. Or I can choose to move it to someplace else on the planet and open up a second city. It does all that just is that's just like a, a semantic thing. It's it's just it's not going to net growth a whole lot in the short term, but in the long term there's some there's some advantages to doing this. The other possibility is that most of our major builds, including the housing project, now not all builds can be done this way. Mining concern is one that you can't do this, but uh, housing concern can be divided into ten. So I could take a housing concern and build and theory, it's called a sub-build. So I could build a t one tenth of a housing concern, a housing for 1,000 to 1,500 people. And then I could choose to set it out somewhere. So I could have a big town of 10,000, or I could have 10 s smaller towns of 1,000. You see how that kind of plays out, and it would be scattered about. Ideally, that's not going to be something you'd want to do on this map. That's why we have bigger area maps, and there's some rules on how to set those up and how to deal with them. And at some point in the near future, I will establish one for my immediate locale. And each hex graduates, so uh, this hex roughly equals, I don't know, uh, 250 square miles or 250 square kilometers. The next one might be uh, 25 square kilometers and then five, you know, five and then and then half of a kilometer. It's all a matter of how you, what scale and what you're dealing with and what you're doing. So that's how we set that stuff up. And my exchange is beginning to shape up and I'm starting to get some of my stuff going on that aspect. We're not quite ready to progress with the next, the next turn, but we're getting there and getting into the next thing. So till next time, this is Rick. Going on, my friends. This is Rick. And hey, if you like the channel, please hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, tell your buddies, tell your friends, tell your co workers, tell anybody else that's in the gaming industry or gaming uh, fandom that says, hey, this is a channel.